Okay, testing on all channels. See if we're getting through on Periscope and Facebook. At this Periscope and Twitter, I should say, at this point in time. Thanks, everybody, for joining me to find out more about what's going on with your forecast across much of the Mid-South. If you have any questions, please let me know. Again, drop them off in the Twitter section or on Periscope as well, and we'll find out more about what's going on in and around the Mid-South. If you have reports from around the area, we'd love to see that as well. So definitely want to give me a little bit more information about what's going on uh, in and around your area. We'd love to know more about that. We've got Periscope and Twitter online. Facebook looks like it is working, and so far it looks like we have a decent audio signal according to what I'm showing here. So if everything is working, we'll go ahead and get going with weather overtime for Saturday night. Thanks to everybody for joining us and for keeping updated as to what's going on with weather in the Mid-South area. Forecast update in the blue bar here. Red forecast bar showing again the social media channels also on that graphic there, also up here. And also don't forget about my forecast update here at wreg.com slash weather. Been a quiet evening across the Mid-South. Not much going on. Hopefully we're going to be able to see some of the Perseid meteor shower taking place for tonight. Night, but clouds are moving their way in from the west, and they're going to be causing some more problems in our direction. We'll talk more about that in just a little bit. Taking a look at radar, most of what you're seeing in and around the Mid-South area is at this time, again, just humidity, bugs, some moisture out there making its way through the Mid-South area, but we don't have much in the way of rainfall. Could be a little bit of some bird flocks going a little bit further back toward the west, crossing between Abbeville, right around the reservoir area, probably coming in for a landing and keeping an eye on what's going on there. Now back to the west, we are seeing some more showers continuing to develop, and west of there, there are some thunderstorms taking place, and the clouds off the tops of those are making their way back toward the east, and so those clouds are going to be coming this direction, and giving us better chances of uh, cloud cover to block out the meteor shower for tonight. So hopefully you get a chance to get out and see some of that in just a little bit. So keep an eye on that. Uh, if you can't get out and see if you can get some meteors earlier on, that'll be the best possibility. Later on tonight, probably won't be able to see all that much, if anything whatsoever. Now, if you can't see them. We'll have a website for you coming up here in just a little bit to where you can listen to the meteors. I know that sounds weird, but Bear with me here for just a second, and we'll show you more about what that means coming up in just a little bit. More of the webcams from around the area. If you'd like to know more about what things look like out there uh, visibly, take a look at some of our webcams operating here on our webcams page, wreg.com slash webcams. More Jerry, hope I'm saying that right, James Harrell, uh, having a good evening. Likewise to you, hope you're having a good one uh, for the evening for Saturday tonight as well. Linda Bell Heathcock, welcome from Tipton County, dry and warm reported there. So good news on that. Give me a second to switch over to something more interesting we can look at here while I'm talking to everybody. Uh, Candy Tippett, welcome to the show. Hoping my family and I have a good weekend. Busy, yes, but uh, good weekend all the way on through as everybody gets geared up to head to college pretty soon in the next couple of weeks. Taylor McKinney, when are we going to have another ozone layer? Uh, we have an ozone layer. We just have a fairly uh, weak one at times at both poles because of the overuse of things like chlorofluorocarbons. Uh, we're starting to see that strengthen a little bit, but if that's not what you're asking about, if you're asking about ozone days and ozone alerts, haven't seen one for a while. Hopefully we won't see anything for a little bit while to come, but we'll keep our eyes on that and let you know more about what's coming up in the near future. Currently, again, we're not seeing a great deal of anything in the way of heavy amounts of rainfall, but more areas of showers and thunderstorms developing back to our west and then moving our direction. That'll be continuing to head our direction here. David Harmon, welcome from across the river. Just went over to Kroger to get some gas over that direction as well. And from my spectacularly brilliant and beautiful wife, Joan Joining us from the couch at home, hopefully she's feeling better feeling a little bit run down uh, for this evening, which is a terrible thing for a teacher after the first week of class. So love you, babe. Hope everything is going well uh, back that direction for tonight and hope the dogs are doing well for this evening. Let's take a look and see what's going on in the to the forecast. As we take a look into the next couple of days, we've got, again, some interesting changes taking place, mainly looking at this stationary front sticking around the area. This is what is going to be causing our weather. This was a cold front that dropped through the area yesterday, and that is going to be again dropping its way into the area of the southeast United States. It's going to be sticking around as a stationary front. It's a front 
that used to be a more powerful cold front. Now it's just going to kind of wobble back and forth, and this is going to help stir up a lot more in the way of showers and thunderstorms off and on from Sunday all the way through the course of the next several days. Could be a problem for outdoor activities. Notice also we're getting a bit of a warm front forming up way back into portions of Kansas and the Great Plains states, so that means some warmer air is building up out that direction and heading our way and that's going to be taking our temperatures up into the next several days. National Weather Service already talking about this. Again, we could see the possibility of some stronger thunderstorms on Monday, especially around northwest Tennessee in that particular area. Also looking again at heat index temperatures later part of the week. That's where we see again the heat index temperatures maybe around 105 degrees which means we could see some heat index temperatures that cause heat advisories to be issued. So if you are going to be doing anything outdoors of the last several days of the week, uh, football camp, football practice for the kids, baseball, soccer, whatever's going on at middle schools and high schools and grade schools out there, marching band practice, stuff like that, very hot to be working outdoors in conditions like that. So make certain everybody got, again, the possibility of a little bit more water to drink and make certain everybody stays hydrated out there. That'll be the big story coming up for later on into the course of the rest of the week. Uh, Ashley Norris, rain tomorrow. We'll talk about that here in just a second. Pam Flowers, the meteor shower is peaking tonight. We'll take a look at the forecast for that coming up in just a little bit. And Billy Franklin, welcome from Lexington, Tennessee. Candy Tippett, that's just the type of girl she is. She's a very caring person on that, so thanks very much for that. Looking at low temperatures tonight, only back in the upper 60s to right around the lower 70s. Unfortunately, as we go into the overnight hours, uh, sky conditions out there, partly cloudy early on, and then as we get into around the rest of the evening, past about midnight, that's when more clouds start to make their way into the area, and that's those gray colors that you see on screen. So if you have a chance to see any meteors from the meteor shower, tonight will be best early, and then unfortunately, as we get into very early tomorrow morning, that's where we see, again, mostly overcast guys coming our way, and that could be a bit of a problem for seeing anything past about midnight, basically, so please keep that in mind if you're going to be uh, doing anything there. High temperatures on Sunday back into the lower to mid-80s, and chances of rainfall, uh, Ashley Norris, if you're looking for chances of rain, yes, it looks like we are going to be seeing some fairly high chances of rain. It's mainly going to be in the uh, afternoon, it looks like an evening as it overspreads portions of the area. A little bit of activity in the morning and then getting more as it works its way a little bit closer to us. So if you're going to the zoo, you may want to pack along some rain protection on there just to be uh, on the safe side for that. Heading into Sunday night, low temperatures, maybe a little bit lower thanks to some more rain out there. Temperatures back in the upper 60s to lower 70s, and that chance of rainfall will be sticking with us right into Sunday night and looks again to be throughout the area on Monday. That'll be the best possibility of rainfall again for a while, about an 80% chance coming up there as we see temp areas picking up some pretty good chances, well, 60% chance, I should say, and then high temperatures on Monday back into the lower to mid 80s. Heading into the next several days, uh, as of right now, we are looking at the possibility of things uh, changing a little bit. The good news at this time, if you haven't seen the forecast for a little bit, taking a look into around next Monday and this particular forecast from the weather underground system as we look all the way over here toward Monday it's going to be warm on next Monday for the eclipse not this Monday but the following Monday uh, things are clearing out a little bit we should be able to see the eclipse there's still going to be clouds out there and there could be some stray thunderstorms not great chances but still possible so things are looking much better for the eclipse they're not looking perfect that's for certain but they are looking a little bit better as we go into the next several days. So definitely good news on that. Once again, if you are traveling, especially toward the East Coast, this is something you're going to have to be keeping an eye on. Uh, a couple of days ago, the Hurricane Center was not giving much credence to this whatsoever. And now we've got an 80% chance of this developing into something. It is just shy of tropical storm strength. Uh, Florida and the East Coast states right back up here into that area. And it looks like this thing is going to be curving its way along the East Coast, but there could be a problem with this, again, if it gets a little closer toward the Carolinas, the Virginias, Chesapeake Bay, 
you may be looking at more evacuation orders going up. So if you're traveling, I would say anywhere between Florida and New York, you want to check and see what's going on with the forecast so you don't have to avoid turning around as an evacuation order is issued. So keep an eye on this. We'll keep an eye on this, and we'll update you on this as we go throughout the rest of the evening. The meteor shower is out there. The moon will be rising a little bit later on. And that's going to drown out most of the meters. So we have two strikes against this. We got the clouds and we got the moon coming up. So as those clouds overspread the area, less of a chance of seeing some of the meteors, but at least you do have the possibility of being able to see it. And this is the really cool thing right here. It's at livemeteors.com. If you've never been here before, go to livemeteors.com and watch the waterfall display. Every time something happens in the way of a echo, what you're looking at is a radar dish firing waves of energy up into the atmosphere at a particular frequency when a meteor streaks across the sky that stretched out gas and dust as it burns up reflects the radio waves at a different angle however it comes into the atmosphere and what you hear is that reflection so it sounds like a ghostly ping or a whistle and you can listen to the meteors smack into the atmosphere even though there's cloud cover out there you will be able to see and hear them on this display this is a really cool thing to take a look at if you're studying, if your kids want to know more about science and meteors and things like that, this is a great place to go to for more details on that. Plus, I posted a couple of very cool things on my Facebook page. Just scroll down a little bit, and you'll be able to see more about what it looks like for when the meteors arrive. And this is, again, a great page to go to for more information about things. Again, this is livemeteors.com. Check it out and listen to the meteors smack into the atmosphere. If you'd like to know more about the upcoming amateur... Ra Sorry, T's, T's coming up on air, and that's what we're getting ready for in the studio out there. In case you've never been to a TV studio before, that's what we have uh, out there. What we have, again, if you'd like to know more from Shelby County Office of Preparedness, new amateur radio class beginning August 17th. Great opportunity to learn more about emergency communications. This is the lowest, the basic level of amateur radio. It's called the Technician Class License. It starts on August 27, or pardon me, August 17th at Germantown State Fire Station Number 4 on Forest Hill Irene Road, thanking Captain Howard Thompson from Germantown Fire Department for putting on this class. I took my general level license class from him. Great teacher, tons of great stories, great experience. If you'd like to know more, you can go to staysafeshelby.us and or you can go and email him uh, more about the registration link is on this page, or contact him directly at jelly at germantown-tn.gov. A great opportunity to learn more. The course is free. The textbook costs 25 bucks, but it is very well worth it, so something to think about on this, if at all par uh, possible, on there. Bart Thompson, no problem. Thanks for joining us uh, here on our uh, weathercast for this evening for weather overtime. Just in time to catch the end of everything, you can catch more on my Facebook page. Today is World Elephant Day. So if you'd like to find out more about how we can protect these magnificent animals and learn a little bit more about conservation, you can go here and learn a little bit more uh, for everything that goes on here. we got your forecast on there. We've got information about the eclipse. We've got information about the meteor shower. Uh, tons of information on there. So a great opportunity. Hey, look, it's me watching me watching me. That's cool. Never done that before. Uh, that's at facebook.com slash WREG, or pardon me, facebook.com slash Austin Onig WREG for more on that. And don't forget to find me again on Twitter uh, for more information. That's at Aonic underscore WREG3. And you can find out more again on Twitter by joining me. If you've got pictures of weather out across the Mid-South, we want to see them. We'd love to be able to post them on these social media networks, and some of you do that. That's great, but we'd like to get more people involved, so if you take photography, pictures out there, anything like that, send them to us. We'd love to be able to feature them, so please let us know and send them to me again here. We're pointing that way. That, again, is the Twitter page you want to send it to, or drop it to me at austin.onic at wreg.com. We'll be giving more weather information a little bit later on. I'll be back on AM 730 Monday morning. I'll be on the East Arkansas Broadcast Network Station throughout the rest of, again, the, the weekend. We'll get a graphic for that set up here pretty soon. And, of course, as you can see, the clock above my head, time to get ready for more information about what's going on uh, with the forecast so we can bring all the details to you live on News Channel 3 at 10, so stay tuned for 
for more there. WREG.com slash weather for more. And stay tuned for more throughout the rest of the weekend. I'll be on bright and early tomorrow morning with our daybreak weather forecast and a lot more coming up again throughout the rest of the weekend with yours truly on News Channel 3. Thanks for joining us on Periscope and Twitter. Thanks for joining us on Facebook. And stay tuned for more weather coming up on News Channel 3 on air and online throughout the rest of the weekend. Thanks for joining us tonight.